Hey champs, Drekken here. Okay, so you've watched the games, seen the players sending their armies at blazing speeds and clicking without missing a beat. Then you go and try it yourself and suddenly your cursor's flailing all over the place. I'm exaggerating a little bit, but what gives? Well, for one, top players have trained hours building muscle memory with a proper setup. So in this episode, we're going to talk about how you can get that mouse setup so that even if you change equipment, hardware, or location, you'll always be able to adjust your sensitivity to your preference without worrying about losing accuracy. So let's optimize that mouse setup for StarCraft II competitive play and rank up. Okay, so you know that having your mouse settings set right is important. So you're just gonna look up your favorite pros and set that, right? Okay. Hold on, before you do that, it's not so simple. Just adjusting your sensitivity without proper setup can lead to misclicks and a jettering cursor, and just plain poor accuracy. Let's build it from the ground up. Our goal is to set up your mouse for high speeds without sacrificing precision, which will give us a good foundation to just build up muscle memory for our accuracy. Before we start, it's important I define a couple of settings and talk about how they affect our accuracy. Okay, let's start by talking about CPI. Yes, you heard right, CPI, which stands for counts per inch, and is the real term the mouse measures in. A count is a number that a mouse reports to the operating system to tell how many pixels to move the cursor when moved one inch. You probably know DPI, dots per inch, and DPI is actually probably closer to printers than it is to a mouse, but somewhere along the lines, it caught on and manufacturers decided to use that because that's what people knew. Oh. Except you, SteelSeries, you're out there using it properly. Shoutouts to you. So, if you see CPI or DPI, know that we're referring to the same thing. The more raw counts your mouse transmits, the more pixels your mouse will move the cursor. CPI can be changed via your mouse manufacturer's software or the mouse itself. But from here on out, we'll use DPI because that's what you all know and secretly know that I'm judging you for doing it wrong. Second is sensitivity, which is the amount your cursor moves on screen relative to how much you move your mouse. This is how you perceive the speed of the cursor. Moving your hand a lot for a little on-screen movement feels slow, and moving your hand a little for a lot of screen movement feels fast. While DPI is configured by your mouse, sensitivity can be changed by your operating system or StarCraft, and is then applied to your DPI. You can create a situation where you have low DPI and then set a high sensitivity or vice versa and it feels to you perfectly normal. But I wouldn't be making this video if there wasn't a catch. Increasing sensitivity through windows or the game, take the number of pixels the cursor should move according to DPI and then multiplies it. This creates a scenario where there's just certain pixels the cursor can't land. And this causes pixel skipping, which adds up to misclicks. But don't worry because the absolute best way to set the speed of your mouse is to get Windows and StarCraft out of your way and adjust your DPI. Creating the much coveted one-to-one -one ratio. This is for every raw count your mouse sends to Windows or StarCraft 2, your mouse cursor moves one pixel on your monitor. No more, no less. Free of pixel skipping and inconsistencies. Before we get started, there are two pieces of equipment we need to confirm. First up is your monitor. Believe it or not, your monitor plays a role in your sensitivity. Screen sign doesn't matter, but rather it's your resolution that's important. The higher the resolution of the monitor, the slower the mouse cursor will feel to move. Remember, one DPI equals one pixel. So if your DPI is set for 1000 and your monitor is set to 1920 by 1080, moving your mouse one inch from left to right will cover just about half. But if you drop your resolution to 1280 by 720, moving from left to right one inch will almost take your whole screen. So if you change resolutions, you just need to adjust your DPI by similar ratio to get back your default. Let's talk about what kind of mouse you have. You're gonna want a gaming mouse. Brand is personal preference, but something to watch out for is letting it adjust your DPI and the polling rate. It should let you change DPI either by a button or the driver software. While polling rate, which is the speed which your mouse communicates with your PC, regular workstation mice have a polling rate of 125 Hertz while gaming mice typically have 1000 Hz, which is ideal. More than that is diminishing returns as far as the game engine and CPU usage is concerned. Anything lower than 500 Hz or on a 120 or 144 Hz monitor, you'll feel a noticeable lag. This is why you wanna stay clear of wireless and go with the wired mice. Wireless Bluetooth mice typically have a polling rate of 133 Hz or lower, and you'll start to need to look at the pricier 2.4 gigahertz mice if you want to match the wired mouse connectivity. Even then, you run into possible connection and stability issues. While wired mice just work, they're cost-effective, and if you go to a LAN event, just plug it in. You're good to go. 
bonus to travel if your mouse has the ability to save the DPI settings on the mouse itself. Okay, so let's get back to talking about setting up that one-to-one -one ratio. To get that golden one-to-one -one ratio, we need to make sure Windows or StarCraft aren't messing with the pixel count. So starting with Windows, open up Control Panel, click Mouse, click Pointer Options. In the Motion section, we want to turn off Enhance Pointer Precision. This is a type of acceleration which left on will limit your ability to make precise movements. Windows will monitor your mouse and try to adjust your sensitivity on the fly based on how fast you've moved your mouse. This will make it difficult to predict how far your mouse cursor will move the next time, making it a variable. Windows has this on by default, so make sure you turn it off. All right, this is where the magic happens. You want to set your mouse to the sixth notch, which is known as 611 in gaming circles. And these notches apply a multiplier to your mouse's sensitivity. Problem is above or below six, Windows will add and deduct pixels like this. Notice the greens and the reds. Those are lost inputs and skipped pixels. So only when we set it to six, do we get our one-to-one. -one. Now, time to open StarCraft. Navigate to options, mouse and keyboard. Okay, first we're gonna tackle enable mouse sensitivity. When checked, StarCraft will use a Microsoft API called Direct Input to bypass Windows and to read your raw mouse movements from an input method called WM Input. Unchecked, let's Windows handle it using a Windows method called WM Mouse Move to tell the game where your mouse is. Now, because StarCraft isn't reading your mouse movements directly, but reading something else, there is a bit of an overhead created and allowing Windows to handle it is nanoseconds faster. Something, though I promise you, will not feel. No, real talk. The real advantage of having StarCraft handle sensitive becomes if you're the kind of person that changes gaming setups often for LAN events. Then you have the peace of mind that your settings will be correct no matter where you go because it saves in your Battle.net account. No need to mess with the Windows settings. So, if you're giving StarCraft the power to control your sensitivity, we still want our one-to-one -one ratio so we can make sure our mouse stays golden. So you see this slider? You need to choose either 51, 52, 53, or 54, because these represent a six out of 11 like I showed you back on Windows. The slider applies similar sensitivities as Windows, but in increments of 5% and rounds it. That is why you have to stay within this range. Going above or below those numbers will cause the same skip pixels we saw when I showed you on Windows handling it. From here, it's time to finally open up the mouse driver and adjust our DPI. While first-person shooter games generally favor a low DPI, StarCraft and other RTS can go on a little bit on the higher end, but not too high to sacrifice accuracy. Typically, players will use anywhere from 600 to 1400, so start somewhere in there. You can now go ahead and practice being precise. Go and load up a map and play by yourself and start playing StarCraft 2. Focus on making very precise movements. When you box your units, make very small boxes. When you issue commands to your army, try to issue single commands instead of successive multiple ones. Just try to hit the spot you want. Load up an arcade game like Iceman's Mouse Accuracy Trainer. Practice grabbing units and without overshooting your target. Even take it outside the game to practice. Go to aimbooster.com or osu to test your accuracy and give the sense of how precise you can be with your mouse while moving quickly. Keep tweaking that DPI on your mouse until you nail that sweet spot. All right, by now you should be well on your way to set up your mouse sensitivity so it's right for you with no skipped pixels and adjusting it for the any gaming setup that comes your way. Good luck and have fun out there. ES Chat Builds is made possible by passionate viewers just like you. To help us level up the scene, go to eschamp.com slash join to become a member and get access to the community, previews, and exclusive shows. It sound right, boy.